Cars, coffee, and questions. All right, what's the purpose of cars, coffee, and questions? I get to have a cup of coffee and talk about specific car problems, questions, comments, and topics that we can discuss. I'll also go over questions from subscribers that help solve specific problems that other people have had. One topic that came up was some people were having trouble resetting their maintenance service light and it just wouldn't reset no matter what they follow. They follow my instructions on YouTube, still won't reset. So there's a few things that you need to keep in mind when this happens. Try it three to five times in a row. Sometimes it will just reset. You could shut the car off, walk away, come back in an hour, try it again. It's a good idea to try it a second time after the car sits. If that still doesn't work, you can perform a battery reset procedure. I have a video on how to perform a battery reset procedure step by step. Just make sure that when you do this procedure, you don't close your trunk, which you still can power it up in the front, but it's just a good idea to keep the trunk open. To perform a battery reset, disconnect the negative cable for a half hour. Just make sure you don't close your trunk during this process. And then reconnect the negative cable start the car make sure you do your sweep all the way one way and then the other way if the steering wheel that's going to get rid of all of the uh, dsc codes that come up because it's going to reinitialize your steering angle sensor then at that point you want to go ahead and try to do the reset again now it was Josef who posted to me and asked this question and i was able to successfully help him by giving him this process after he performed the battery reset procedure He's all set, ready to go, his oil service reset. All right, I also got a question from uh, Mano Desai, and hopefully I'm saying your name right. Uh, they want to know why their number 28 fuse, which is a 5 amp, keeps blowing randomly on their 2003 E46. Well, I'm going to throw some uh, pictures up on the screen for you. And I'm going to go over some of uh, the reasons why this could be happening. First, let me go over why the fuse is opening. Well, you probably have a short somewhere, or there's something in the circuit connected to the heater control panel that's drawing too much amperage, and it's overloading that 5 amp fuse. If you have uh, a wire chafe and it touches up against ground, it will then the current will flow too quickly and too much, and it'll open the fuse. So it's either that some component is drawing too much, or it could actually be that uh, you have a wire short somewhere. So there's a couple things in the circuit that you need to check. All right, so here's the wiring diagram. Here's the ignition switch. So you have power coming from your ignition switch to fuse 28. And then it's going to a rear defogger relay, which is right here. And it's going to your heating and AC control module. And it's also going to a temperature switch on your uh, transmission. So according to that wiring diagram, it is going to the heater control panel at X608. So this is the connector right here. This is the small connector. So you're going to want to disconnect that connector and see if your fuse is still opening. You are also going to want to check your defogger relay, which is on the right-hand side of the luggage compartment. It's uh, the K13 relay right there. You can go ahead and check your wiring in that area, and I would recommend disconnecting the relay and seeing if uh, the problem goes away. And then the last thing on this circuit that it possibly could be would be a temperature sensor that's on the side of the transmission. So you would have to go to your transmission and take a look for this sensor and check your wiring that goes to it. If there's any chafing, I would imagine it may be in this area right here. And you can also disconnect the sensor and see if the fuse stops opening. Just remember that uh, this could cause a fault and that um, the temperature sensor should not be left unplugged for any length of time. Alright, hopefully that helps. Um, I also want to go over today of why you should winterize your car battery. The cold weather is already here, so it's a good idea to have your battery ready. Is your battery ready for the cold weather? It's a good idea to never let your battery drop below 75%. Once it reaches this point, it can cause permanent damage to your battery. Remember, cold weather can greatly affect how your battery performs. Engine oil is thicker at cold temperatures, so it takes more amperage to turn your engine over when the oil is cold. It would make sense. And also, your battery 
output is reduced when it's cold. So you mix those two things together and you have a recipe for disaster if your battery is at 75%. Just so you know, the amount of amperage needed to turn your engine over at zero degrees doubles. At zero degrees, your battery works at about 65% efficiency. So in short, a weak battery in a cold day can leave you stranded. So you want to make sure that your battery is ready to go. You can prevent this with some battery winterization steps, which are pretty simple. So the first thing is to check and continuously record once a week, maybe once a month, use a voltmeter and actually check to see what the voltage reading is on your battery. It's very simple. You just put your voltmeter on volts and then make sure it's on DC current, which is direct. It's not the squiggly line, which would be for your house. Take your positive and negative and just go across the terminals and read it what it says. It should read on a good battery 12.66, which is 100%. So you want 12.66, which would be 100% for your battery. That means your battery is bueno. It's doing good. It's healthy. Now keep in mind for cold weather, your voltage will drop 0.01 volts for every 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So a fully charged battery at uh, 0 degrees, let me see. At zero, you would have 12.516, that's fully charged. At 32 Fahrenheit, you would see 12.587. So, temperature greatly affects how your battery can perform. When you're checking this, just keep that in mind. So, I think if you, on a cold day, if you go out and check your battery and you see 12.516 or 587, you're close to the 12.66 range, you're good to go. But at 12, 4, 5, you're dropping, and that could actually lead to a problem. There's, there's some reasons why this could be the case, even if you're driving your car all the time. It could be um, just a driving style thing. So short distance driving. So I'm going to go to the coffee shop, and I'm going to return home. Well, that's one trip, and the coffee shop's five minutes down the road. That is not enough time to charge your battery back up. The best method to charge up your battery would be to use a battery charger. And that would be a fully automatic one at a two amp setting over a long period of time. You wanna to try to maintain that battery, just hook it up. Hook it up overnight. If sometimes it charges within 12 hours. If your battery is at 75%, it should definitely be charged unless there's another problem going on. Now you can drive your car in order to charge your battery, but there's a problem with that. You have to start your car, which drains the energy. And then when you're driving, usually you want to listen to the radio. If it's nighttime, you have the lights on. Um, it's cold out, you have your heated seats on. You want to be nice and toasty. You got your heated steering wheel, so you're cold. And you want to listen to some music. Because you got to drive your car for 30 minutes to 40 minutes um, off idle, so 40 miles an hour. And that's no fun if you have everything turned off. But to charge your battery correctly, for that length of time, you want to reduce or kill all of the loads. So a load would be something like your blower's on, so no heat. Uh, your lights are on, which if it's nighttime, I wouldn't recommend shutting off. And um, anything like your heated seats, heated steering wheel if you have it. I mean, any of those things. You listen to the radio, so better listen to it on your phone while you drive instead. That way you can charge your battery. So it takes a lot of time and it's not as efficient as actually just hooking up a battery charger. Now if you drive and you commute and you're driving two to three hours, well, you're good to go. So that's going to take a long time and you really shouldn't be having a problem with your battery because you have a long drive. But those short distance drives, you know, five, eight minutes, grocery store back, coffee shop back, you know, go visit a parent, come back home you keep draining that battery just a little bit and you never bring it up to a full charge. So what happens is you end up at that 75%, you get a cold day, and then you're done. It's dead. So you definitely want to keep an eye out and keep checking that battery and I would recommend to use a battery charger. Alright, a couple of things to watch out for. Never charge a battery that is leaking, that's sulfuric acid. I think I said that right this time. A battery that's case is bulging, it could explode if you charge that battery. Um, the case is weakened, it's bulging out, you should replace that battery, wear some safety goggles, be careful. Um, leaking fluid, once again, you can use um, baking soda to neutralize 
but you want to definitely inspect that battery every time that you check it and make sure it's safe. Uh, when you disconnect and reconnect your negative cable, sometimes you can cause a little spark. And batteries, the gases that come off a battery from charging are explosive. So it could actually blow up in your face. I actually had it happen to a technician who had uh, the battery in the trunk and he had charged the battery and the vent wasn't hooked up. On a BMW in the trunk we have a little vent on the side of the battery and that outgasses to the atmosphere outside of the car. Well that didn't happen. Put the negative cable on, bam! It blew up in his face, got some singed hair, some singed eyebrows. Thankfully he was wearing safety glasses. So, and he didn't get hurt. But it can happen, you do have to be careful. And I couldn't believe that actually happened. Nine times out of ten it won't happen, but that one time they get you would be not be a very good day. Now remember, if you do disconnect your battery, disconnect it from the negative cable first, then the positive cable, positive cable first, then negative cable. That is how you disconnect and reconnect a battery. Now the average lifespan of a battery is four to five years. A lot of times people go way longer than that, but as a maintenance requirement, general rule of thumb, Four years you should have it checked, five years you should be thinking about replacing it. That way you don't get stranded. If you want to stretch it out, you absolutely can. Uh, guilty, I'm definitely guilty. I don't replace my battery unless I have a problem. Though I do check it, I make sure it's not leaking, I make sure that I'm not getting any issues with corrosion. Um, I do check the uh, electrolyte water level in it, fill it with distilled water, recharge it. You maintain that battery, it'll last you a lot longer. So it is a good idea to keep up with battery maintenance. It's going to save you money in the long run. Now storing your battery also, you have to remember that there's always some kind of a drain on your battery. So 0 0.050 or 50 milliamps is a normal drain. You have to be able to keep your radio stations, your, your time and date, all of those things take energy and normal consuming of the car is about 50 milliamps. So if you store your car for an extended period of time, say you're going on a trip, you're going to be gone for two weeks. Well, if your battery's at 75%, that's not going to be good because when you come back, your battery's going to be below the healthy mark and you've damaged that battery. So you want to charge your battery before you go. Hopefully you don't have any parasitic draw, which if you do, I do have a couple of videos on how to check and test for parasitic draw. But as long as you maintain that battery, bring it up to 100%, go on vacation. When you get back, your car should start right up. Let me add one more note. And I've seen this quite often. So I've seen people go and try to start their car, and it's like a no start. All right, my battery's dead. Well, that doesn't make sense because when I check it, my voltage is 12.6 volts. So you can have a perfectly charged battery, but that voltage is not getting up to the starter. Well, the most common cause that I've seen is that somebody's left either the positive or negative cable loose. Now, you leave a positive cable loose, you can actually arc things and you can cause damage to engine control units. So be careful, don't leave that one loose. The negative side, I've actually seen melt and, and be sizzling. And I mean, it could cause a, uh, a car fire, it would be pretty rare. But usually what happens with a loose negative cable, if it's right against the terminal, is that you end up with a voltage drop because it's arcing and it gets like um, powder in between and it causes a voltage drop between the actual connection and the terminal. So when that happens, your car's not going anywhere. So you can go to start your car and it's going to act like a dead battery. And all it really is is that someone left that negative cable loose. That's actually a common misdiagnosed um, problem that I've seen. I've had people ask me questions about stuff like that. I go check the car. I find the negative cable loose. Any kind of weird electrical problem, your car doesn't start, check your negative cable, check your battery connections first and make sure that you have that good 12.6 at your battery. If your battery cable is loose, I would recommend cleaning the terminals. I have a video on that if you like to watch it. And just clean it up, put it back on and you've fixed that voltage drop and you should be good to go. And that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe to my channel and ring that bell.